Hello and welcome. My name is Professor E. A. Burlingame. I'm an anthropologist, author, and educator based in New York City. I teach ambitious nerds like you life and intellectual skills through the wisdom of anthropology so you can more confidently handle the relationships you have with others and with yourself. I personally love it when someone asks me some version of this question. I'm interested in anthropology, Professor, but I don't know what books to read. Do you have any recommendations? Well, yes. In fact, I do. Questions like these thrill me because they indicate a sincere interest in anthropology and the useful knowledge that can be gained from my very favorite holistic science. So the idea for this video lecture was inspired by the people who have asked me this question over the years, in one form or another. As the science that studies, describes, and understands humans broadly through history, language, culture, and biology, anthropology has a great deal to share about us humans that can both inspire and entertain in reading form. So in this talk, I'll be teaching you what anthropology reading is and what you can gain by doing it. I'll also be giving you six book suggestions that feature anthropology. Finally, I'll issue a reading challenge for you to do at your leisure. Regardless of what you may have heard, anthropology reading can be done both inside and outside of a formal classroom setting. Most anthropology research ends up in book form. The kind of book anthropologists write is called an ethnography. Classic ethnographies take the reader into the everyday lived lives of the peoples anthropologists study so that they can immerse themselves in another way of life and another way of thinking. Anthropology research can also be found in collections of essays or articles and in whole books that explore human language, history, evolution, and health, for example. An ongoing expectation for anthropologists is to write books steeped in their own research, and you can find numerous examples of this that explore human beings and human topics across cultures and through many time periods. Teaching anthropology for more than a decade, both inside and outside of a university setting, has shown me over and over again how much people can be both excited and inspired by anthropology when they have a chance to experience it through a book. It has always been my observation that humans are human-centric. We like to think and learn about ourselves. Reading anthropology can scratch that itch for anyone who loves books. There are many, many reasons to read anthropology, some more and some less positive than others. But for this anthropologist, I'd say that the main reason you should read anthropology is to gain deep insight into yourself and others. As I've already stated, even before I became an anthropologist, I had observed how much people want to know more about people. We're curious about each other, and we want to know the truth about people who live now and who have lived in the past. Being nosy and having a proven scientific process to support that nosiness, anthropologists have done a great deal of the legwork already to bring vast and various information about humans to other human beings. Not for the purposes of comparison and judgment, not in order to feel superior or inferior to others, but to understand, really understand what it means to be human and to live a human life. This is what reading anthropology can give to anyone intrepid enough to accept the challenge. Most anthropology writing is in the form of nonfiction. Nonfiction anthropology books are based in facts and data collected through research, and they provide snapshots of humanity at particular times and in different places. Cultural anthropologist Richard B. Lee's ethnography, The Dobe Du Tuanzi, is a charming, poignant, and accessible ethnography that allows you to take a walk in the shoes of a group of people whose lives, worldviews, and experiences can help you more deeply understand and accept how humans are both the same and different. Lee also writes about his personal experiences among these people he has known since the early 1960s. This ethnography delves into anthropology and human topics such as family, rites of passage, 
modes of making a living, healing systems, and cultural change. Cultural anthropologist Laila Abu Lugid's ethnography, Writing Women's Worlds, is a sensitive portrait of the women she studied among the Aulid Ali. It can open your eyes to how people with fundamental differences and disagreements can still find ways to live and interact well with one another. This ethnography includes the poetry, stories, and songs that are a meaningful part of how these women communicate, as well as Abu Lugid's own experiences as an anthropologist living among them. It sheds light on anthropology and human topics such as marriage, education, household form, gender, and reflexivity. Evolutionary biologist Stephen J. Gould's influence on physical anthropology and anthropology theory is considerable. His book, The Mismeasure of Man, is broadly about human biology, but is more specifically about how we humans can very easily ignore or not even recognize the influence of culture on our behavior, actions, and worldviews. It sheds light on anthropology and human topics such as human growth and development, power structures, and the use of scientific knowledge. These three books will challenge you to grow both intellectually and emotionally. Perhaps this will surprise some of you, but the science of anthropology has also influenced and inspired the work of fiction writers. Although they cannot be read as factually true as nonfiction anthropology can be, the following works of fiction can still provide anthropology insight into human beings. They can be a way for anyone to benefit from the wisdom of anthropology through storytelling. Author Jean M. All's Earth's Children series was inspired by anthropological research on the evolution of humans and other hominids. My favorite book in the series, and the one I'm recommending here, is the second one, entitled The Valley of Horses. In this part of the series, which you can read as a standalone novel, the main character is just beginning to create a life for herself, and eventually others, after surviving great trauma, loss, and heartbreak. All's book explores and sheds light on the anthropology and human topics of discrimination, technology, gender, sex, and sexuality. Author Ursula K. Le Guin's father was respected anthropologist Alfred Krober, and the influence of anthropology on her fiction is clear. I find that some of her stories seem to be inspired by the findings of anthropologists who study Papua New Guinean cultures, but her father studied Native Americans, and Le Guin's work is probably more inspired by this research. I recommend that you read her book, A Wizard of Earthsea. It's a coming-of-age story for the main character, who learns and grows through the cross-cultural and magical experiences he has throughout the story. This book explores and sheds light on the anthropology and human topics of power, rites of passage, conflict, and family. Linguist and author J.R.R. R. Tolkien's Lord of the Rings series is another wonderful example of how anthropology, in this case in the form of cultural linguistics, can inspire great fiction. Tolkien's creation of languages and the cultures that go along with them is at this point legendary and highly influential on fiction in general and fantasy fiction in particular. Although I'm a fan of the entire series, if you haven't read any of these books or have only seen the films or TV shows, then I'd recommend you start with the first, The Fellowship of the Ring. This book explores and sheds light on the anthropology and human topics of language and communication, warfare, power structures, and relationships. Although not true in a non-fiction sense, these three fiction books can still help reveal human truths. Living in a world filled with difference and change could make anyone feel like they will never understand other people and like they don't know how to cope with the chaos prompted by those around them. While nothing has all of the answers for every person, I can still wholeheartedly and without reservation recommend that you read Anthropology for the purposes of better understanding humanity as a whole. Reading Anthropology can help you grow as a person by giving you practice and deep insight into dealing with the inevitabilities of human difference and change. Now, personally, I'm just as happy reading nonfiction as I am reading fiction. They are both equally enjoyable to me. If you feel the same way, then I challenge you to pull your next reading selection from any of the six suggestions I've given you in this talk. 
If, however, you are a reader who prefers one over the other, then I challenge you to immediately follow your own reading bliss within my nonfiction or fiction suggestions. I encourage you to read your chosen book with your anthropology thinking cap on. And if you're interested in one more bonus anthropology reading suggestion from me, please feel free to check out my book, A Taste of Anthropology, How the Wisdom of Anthropology Can Improve Your Life Skills and Help You Live Well in a Divided World. My book is nonfiction, with the aim of getting you to apply anthropology research to the real-world problem of dealing well with conflict in your relationships with your fellow human beings and within yourself. Unlike the other readings I've suggested to you in this talk, my anthropology book falls more specifically into the categories of self-help and personal growth. I'm very clear about the lessons my anthropology book can teach you, and I've written it in a practical manner that includes eye-opening research, relatable stories, and engaging activities you can do to immediately apply each lesson. A Taste of Anthropology is available in ebook and paperback format on Amazon and in ebook format through various trusted international purveyors you can find by following my Universal Book link here. I wish you very happy anthropology reading. As always, until next time, goodbye and take care.